All right, welcome back to Crew Call with the Scooters. Very excited to introduce to you our next guest, who is Jared Wickerham, who is a staff photographer at the City Paper. Uh, Jared, thank you so, so much for joining uh, us today and being part of this. Yeah, thanks for having me, I'm, I'm excited. And uh, I mentioned this before, but Jenna, Jennifer, um, huge fan of your work uh, and has been following your stuff you know, for a while now. So we really, really are very excited to, to have you here. So yeah, let's jump right into this. Let's hear a little bit about you, who you are, um, what's your background? Did you always know you wanted to get into photojournalism and photography? Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess for quite some time, I mean, probably since I was in junior high, uh, you know, I was kind of that, um, that skater kid mm. who, who, you know, ended up on crutches and uh, had nothing else better to do and had taken a photography course in the summer that my grandparents had paid for. And uh, so I grabbed a camera and started kind of shooting my friends. And, um, you know, that was kind of the beginning of it. And, you know, what kind of started as a love for playing sports and being involved with it kind of morphed into photographing sports. Um, that that uh, became apparent when I wasn't good enough to, uh, you know, play, uh, play anything after high school. So um, I guess I got the next best, uh, next best thing. And um, yeah, and so I've, I've kind of um, moved around a little bit. Uh, I graduated from the Art Institute uh, in Pittsburgh in 2010, and then since then I was a staff photographer at Getty Images in Boston, um, covering sports and news for them out there, um, and came back here and kind of worked on an office of freelancer, and um, a little over two years ago I took a staff job with Pittsburgh City Paper, and uh, still continue some of my freelance work today, so. Yeah, I was going to talk about, I want to get into the City Paper because, you know, this now we're in 2021, but 2020 was such a intricate, complicated year. So you guys at the city paper have done incredible work. I mean, you really are on the ground running first there reporting so beautifully what is actually happening. So I want to talk about that, but first off, you're from Pittsburgh originally then, right? Is that where you grew up or you just went to the art Institute in Pittsburgh? Yeah, I grew up in um, Chautauqua Lake, New York, just north oh, of the year. Yeah. And then I uh, went to high school outside of Columbus, but my my mom and grandparents were both from uh, Homestead and Bethel Park. So, um, so we had some familiarity here. Strong tie-in. Yeah. And so you were with Getty and then how did you get into some freelancing? Is that, was that after the staff photography? Was it kind of during it that you started? Cause you do work for, oh my gosh, ESPN, the Steelers, New York Times, Associated Press. I mean, you have some big names that you've worked for. How have you, did you get involved with them? What do you, what work do you like to do for them? Yeah, I mean, I kind of started before the staff job. I interned with Getty in New York City. Um, yep. So being there and meeting all those people kind of automatically, um, you know, got me connected to a lot of those people and places. And, and everyone kind of moves around to someone who may have been at the New York Times is now at Sports Illustrated mm -hmm. and now is somewhere else. So, um, so yeah, kind of both. Uh, I started freelancing a little bit before I went staff with Getty. And then um, since then, I've I've kind of really, um, you know, I, I do a lot of the wire work and, and magazine work, but I still, I, I kind of fell into the world of tennis, um, so interesting. which yeah, is uh, awesome. not something I was really into as a kid. Um, you know, I played soccer and was into, you know, some of those maybe more mainstream sports, but I, um, I covered the U S open when I interned with Getty in New York and, um, photographed it a couple years after that. And, now um, I run a number of photo teams. Uh, we do the BMP Paribas Open, which was um, uh, ironically the first North American sporting event to cancel um, for COVID uh, three days before um, it was declared a global pandemic. Um, so that was March um, 8th, I believe. And um, yeah, so I do a number of tournaments. I do that, the US Men's Clay Court Championships in Houston. Um, Connecticut Open, which is uh, which just uh, folded and moved to uh, China, um, Winston Salem Open, Rogers Cup in Toronto, and, and some other smaller ones. So that's incredible. And let's talk about it because you mentioned briefly COVID. So when COVID hit last March, which is un insane that we're almost at a year now on that, 
Um, were you affected right away? Did you, did work kind of stop for a little bit or were you always considered essential and were you able to get out there and, and continue to work? Yeah, I mean, we were, we were in Palm Springs, California when it started. So, um, you know, and we were essentially around the same group of people. They had, um, we had a smaller tournament the week before. So that ended on a Sunday. They actually made the ball kids wear gloves. Um, they thought that that was going to be the, enough. you know, yeah. yeah. And, and they were getting hand sanitizer stations, um, you know, for every corner of the facility. And, and so um, that ended at, somewhere around three o'clock, I think on a Sunday and at six o'clock they had canceled the BNP, which was to begin the very next day on the same site. So um, we stayed for a week. We did a number of smaller things. We did some trophy shoots and some marketing things. Um, normally that's my big tournament. I'm usually there for like three, three and a half weeks. And um, so we did what we could with nobody on the grounds and it kind of gave us the opportunity to get some things done that normally we wouldn't have time for. Um, but yeah, I mean, coming back and, and, and working for City Paper, it's, um, you know, we normally cover arts and culture and entertainment and that kind of thing. So when those are all, you know, put on, put on hold, um, we didn't really know what it would look like at first. Um, you know, I did the, the obvious photo essays and photo stories on right. empty Pittsburgh and, and we did a, a, a really neat photo essay um, on the portraits of the pandemic, essentially. We did um, essential workers. So we did Port Authority bus drivers, um, male persons and, uh, you know, nurses, doctors, um, auto mechanics, you know, people who had no choice but to work through all right. of that. Um, so. What if you like, in terms of like your shooting style and things like that, I want to go back. So I know you said you started as a, in high school, but were you ever inspired by anyone like in terms of how they shot or taking things around you inspired it? And have, did you have to change that when you were shifting from like sports and entertainment to maybe the essential workers or the, the stillness of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, there were a number of kind of people who got me interested in it. A um, couple of photos that are hanging on, the, on my other wall are Mike Blavick, who is a skateboard yeah. photographer. And I had this version of this poster in my wall. I must have had it in 12 different forms. Mm -hmm. And, but what he did was a little more storytelling, um, you know, with his skateboard photography. So that's kind of what I always brought to my sports was not just, here's a tight head to toe shot of someone swinging a bat and hitting a home run. Um, you know, I want to get there early and stay late and find these little moments in between. So sports kind of helped um, my news because I was able to work quicker because I'm used to, you know, yes. incredibly fast uh, athletes running around in front of me. Um, and my news helped my sports because it allowed me to be more storytelling um, to kind of expect the unexpected, you know, sports is going to happen between these four lines, right. For the most part. Right. Right. And news doesn't, you know, you don't have, you know, for better or for worse, you don't have that um, luxury of knowing where everything's going to happen um, or how it's going to happen. Um, so, so they, they kind of really, um, you know, work for each other and, and doing the city paperwork has, has really made me a better portrait photographer. Um, especially now that's largely what we're doing a lot of. Right. And to bring that to sports has been huge because most sports photographers who just show up and shoot a Pirates game or a Steeler game or something, they, they may not, you know, be the best with um, posing or lights or, or being in a studio or something like that too. So yep. um, they really all help each other. And how different was it? I know you just wrapped up a couple of weeks ago, unfortunately the Steelers, you know, season ended um yeah. but how different was it being in this in the stadium and being there without fans and did that change how you shot things or did it change the feel of anything without the audience in the in Heinz field I mean it, it definitely changed the emotion that was there yeah. right? Um, right there's always going to be a couple of moments but but for better or worse those players are going to feed off of the crowd and um, when you don't have those interactions, um, 
you know, there's just fewer emotions to capture. Um, but from a technical standpoint, um, it's obviously a little bit different. Um, you know, we're, we were essentially allowed to shoot anywhere from the first row back to the first section of stands. So you've got to kind of um, be a little more creative in how you do it, you know, in every aspect of the game, whether it's the action stuff or, um, you know, kind of those smaller moments on the bench or the players entering the tunnel, you got to really think about um, how you can technically be different without having the access. Absolutely. Um, so there were two of uh, the, the, the main team photographer, Carl was on the field and he would get tested. Um, but then there was an intern and myself who would kind of roam a different side of the stands. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of worked as a team and, um, you know, Carl was obviously down there to get that stuff, but, um, you know, it's tough because, uh, you know, you can't possibly be everywhere and those stands yeah. make it logistically difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't say, Oh, well, I'm just going to be in the end zone as soon as they get down to the 20 yard line. Well, now you have to go up and over and down and maybe you don't have enough time to get there before. before right. the blows. So, um, it was, it was a challenge for sure. I'm sure. And he did an incredible job and it's beautiful. The like, photos that you did are incredible and you get in there and get the details and the little parts that most people don't see which you mentioned and I know that one of the questions is how do you process what you see you know you have to probably react fast to it but how do you take that in and, and capture that in a photo um I guess just a lot of practice yeah. you know um you know with with sports I, I guess really with both it's it's kind of just feeling out the situation. Um, and the more you are at any of these events, whether it's a sporting event or, or a protest or a news event or something like that, um, the longer you're at that particular event and the longer you're at those events, those types of events in general, you know um, kind of how they go, whether that's, you know, you know a certain player's tendencies or how they might celebrate or maybe where the ball gets thrown most of the time or that kind of thing. And then at a newsy event, maybe you um, you kind of understand uh, a little bit of their of how they work, and um, you know some of the protests may you know you see a, a intersection coming up, and you say, oh, they usually circle up at this intersection. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe this is my chance to take a break and send some photos, or maybe I'll go and get a, a different vantage point for mm -hmm. it. Um, you know, so just being there um, regularly. Uh, can really help. And let's talk about some of the, you know, last summer, the protests, even up through the election. I know you were there the night before the election at uh, the performance with Lady Gaga and Joe Biden on the North side. How was that? How did you feel in those moments? What did you take away from the cr those crowds and how you wanted to showcase some of that stuff? If you want to talk about those moments, um, I think would be interesting. Yeah, well, that was um, just kind of a, a fortunate um, phone call that I got maybe a week or two before um, my friend Adam Schultz is um, was just named uh, Joe Biden's photographer and he was his photographer throughout the campaign. Um, so he had essentially asked me to, to help cover that. And they, they really only had one photo that, that they needed. Um, yeah. He needed a photo of, um, of President Biden and, and, and Dr. Biden holding hands next to each other, essentially at the end of his speech. Okay. Which may sound really easy, and I and I thought it was going to be, especially <laughs> being a sports photographer. And they had told me that they had tried to get this at other uh, alleys and events and things, and it didn't always work out. So Adam and I kind of talked and took two different positions. So we had a, two different angles on it. Um, mine was a little uh, a little elevated, mm -hmm. and um, I really had three frames. And this is me shooting at you know twelve frames a second. I think yeah. I had three frames where both eyes were open, you know, they were holding hands and they're both engaged with the crowd, you know, other, and then the family kind of came in the background. And before that, yep. um, Jill had actually walked up to him and kind of grabbed him by the shoulder and, you know, there's music playing and the crowd's cheering and it was a, um, you know, so it was kind of loud and he didn't see her and he kind of like was startled. So then he, you know, kind of had this, you know, kind of funny look on his face when yeah. he turned around. So again, not really the picture they're looking for, so it took a little longer to develop and that moment really only lasted uh, a split second. So, um, yeah. you know, here I'm thinking, oh, this will be easy, piece of cake, no problem. 
Right. I think that's so impo- like important. All the, like all those photos, it's like, oh, they got it. But it's like, you have no time and you're dealing with elements and people and everything. I mean, that's, it's not an easy task to do. So well, in that moment, you, you know, same <laughs> right. with sports, you, you worry about, as a, you, you never know if a ref's going to get in your way or a secret service agent, sure. you know, he stands back from that podium, someone else is going to, you know, people are on the move. So, um, you know, you just never know, uh, you know, you, you try and be as proactive as possible in those scenarios and, and at least communicate to people and say like, Hey, you're not going to like, I just need this one photo right. to walk over here. Right. Okay, cool. Thanks. You know, right. and, and hope that that helps. That's awesome. And so you've had an incredible year, busy year, I'm sure. What would be your most proud moment of this past year? And then just your most proud moment in terms of your career so far? Yeah. I mean, um, you, you know, covering these protests, this, this spring and summer, um, you know, isn't something that you want to happen. Um, you hope that those protests don't have to occur for the reasons that they did. Um, but I think the one thing that was really unexpected was, um, gaining the trust of the community, um, Mm -hmm. in doing those, uh, even before, um, the, the the killing of George Floyd. We had covered a few protests here, a, a free Black Mamas uh, protest at the jail, um, some end cash bail type protests. Um, so we had covered probably five or six um, right before then, and these were all kind of car protests. And um, but by the end of you know, essentially by the by the end of you know protesting season. Um, once the weather kind of, um, you know, got a lot colder, we had, I think I had covered over 50 and, and our staff had probably covered, you know, somewhere around, you know, 75 to 80, I would say. Um, and I think just being that reliable source, um, Mm -hmm. went a long way. And we really kind of saw that on, on June 1st in East Liberty, um, when, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people maybe don't know this story, but essentially there was a three hour protest through East Liberty. Um, you know, the, the police were kind of on either end of the protests. Um, you know, there were even, you know, people up on top of target, there were police officers on top of target and, um, they kind of ended there, um, more or less everyone kind of hung out for a bit and then. I would say probably half the group, more than half the group kind of made its way down center Avenue towards Negley. And I hadn't really noticed it that, that that group had left. Everyone was just so spread out. Um, There was a a person who ended up um, covered all in black, couldn't really see a thing. um, And went up and smashed a window or two at sneaker villa and then went to the bank next door and smashed a window there very purposeful there was nothing that brought this on it was just like they had probably determined they were going to do that that day and the protesters obviously didn't appreciate that they they actually told the police they said hey this guy did it blah 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 the police came over immediately stood in front of those two businesses and we thought that was the end of it it was really you know, there, there was no, um, really not a whole lot of drama involved. It was just like, right. broke it, you know, police right. came over, you know, done. I realized the group had started making their way down center Avenue. So I just kind of puffed it to the front of the group. Um, and it was pretty soon after, um, it was really only a block from Negley at that point. And we see, you know, a group of, um, you know, SWAT and Pittsburgh police and in full riot gear waiting at that intersection. And this group had no idea why that was happening because they had just marched for three hours and, oh. and, and been fine. But these, this group of people had no idea what had just happened down the street behind them. These police were obviously aware of it and that's why they were there. Um, but this group really had nothing to do with that action um and we're essentially being punished for it so um you know once ryan kind of put out 
that article and talked about, you know, the police came out with a statement saying that, that, you know, they were antagonized first and, and that kind of thing. And, um, we took a look at a lot of social media videos and firsthand accounts, obviously outside of my own and, and determined that wasn't the case. I, you know, it was, it was, I, I think, um, I think the community at large kind of appreciated, you know, the fact that, um, we were there to, to really tell the story of what happened. Um, and I think there's just a lot more nuance there too, that, that needed to be talked about. So. Wow. That's an incredible story. And you're right. I mean, do you think about it, that side of things, it's like things can get blown out of proportion. Stories can change. So having you and someone else there to really show what happened is probably a huge, huge, like, just, you know, sigh of relief, I would think for some. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of really tough moments to capture and ha being able to have those conversations with people, you know, it again happened after they had, um, you know, there was a group of protesters at Peduto's house and he allowed them up on his, yep. on his front steps and on his front porch. And um, he had left, the police told them to go to Mellon Park. They went to Mellon Park. They were met with um, pepper spray and some kind of uh, projectile. And there was another moment where um, uh, there was a woman who was um, having trouble seeing from the pepper spray and I went to grab a photo and one of the protesters was essentially like, Hey, like, you know, give her, give her her privacy, give her some space. And we had essentially had a conversation and I was able to say, Hey, like, I, I understand that people are really vulnerable in these moments. Um, yeah. I had just been sprayed five minutes ago and luckily a protester came up and, you know, I couldn't see a thing. Someone just gave me a bottle of water and, you know, at least kept me going enough. Um, mm -hmm. And, and these things happen so fast that, you know, I had a gas mask and I wasn't even thinking that this was a possibility. I thought, we'll just walk into the park and people will disperse and that'll be the end of the night. And, um, you know, and I had a conversation with this person and I just said, you know, I, I know it sucks, but we need to document these type of moments yeah. too, because I think people really connect with um, the humanity in them. Um, and they can see the cause and the effect um, both captured visually. And I know these aren't things that people want to see or maybe people don't always want yeah. to remember, but they, they at least need to be there. Um, and again, if I hadn't shown up to, you know, right. 40 other protests and hadn't at least built some, some trust there, I think, um, I think people would have probably just not attacked me physically, but just would have really questioned who I was and why right. I was there and where these images are going and the intention um, behind it. Absolutely. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Well, well th I mean, thank you for doing that because it's so important that that photojournalism aspect is so important for just our culture and just to know, understand what's happening. So we truly appreciate that. And that's a probably a very difficult situation to be in. Um, and what are you excited about this year? I mean, is there other projects that are coming up? Or is there things that you're like, I'm ready to get back to maybe in the sports world that, you know, I know you missed a lot of tournaments last year. So is there any exciting things that you want to share with us today? A little insight. Yeah. yeah. Well, we just learned that uh, one of the, well, two of the tournaments that I do were just canceled. The, the one, the BNP that yeah. was canceled last year, um, maybe moved to a different time of the year there. I think they're trying to make that happen. Um, and then the one in Houston was just canceled yesterday morning. So um, I love to do some tennis uh, safely. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think I'd, you know, I'd certainly feel a lot better about it if, um, you know, media is, is currently in the, in the one C category for vaccination. So I'm hoping that we can get things moving and, right. and I can get that and feel a little bit better, not just for myself, but people around me. I think that's the Absolutely. most important part is the fact that, you know, um, you know, I'm out and about and meeting people every day and, and trying to do it as safely as possible, but also, you know, you have to realize that, that sometimes the, the better photos are the ones close up, the more intimate Absolutely. photos when you can spend time with people. And this time of year, that's, you're not doing that outside. So right. it's really tough. Um, it's a, it's a really tough, um, but you have to have those conversations with every subject, you know, what's, what's safe, what are you comfortable with? Um, and I think we, uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of, of doing that. And I think we just respect whatever 
somebody is, is feeling on that given day. And as long as you have those honest conversations with, um, with people, I think it's, um, I think you can do it in a safe manner. So, um, yeah, I mean, really, I'd just like to get back to some, some artsy kind of, uh, things, you know, um, we've talked about doing a couple fun photo essays coming up. So hoping to make those happen and, and get, uh, a little sense of normalcy back. Um, so, uh, you know, these, these artists and people in our city have been working so hard for so long. Um, and they've had all this time to themselves. Absolutely. So it would be nice to showcase what they're doing. Completely agree. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. I know you're extremely busy. We could probably talk all day and hear all of your stories, but I know you have a lot of work to do. But again, thank you for the work and, uh, you know, be safe. And thank you again for being here with us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Jared.